Howdy folks, welcome to Coffee and Tools this week and uh, a lot of things going on but this week I wanted to show you uh, something that happened actually weeks ago when we discovered there was a secret room in the house so we're going to go through that a little bit. I'm going to show you some clips of me tearing the cabinet down and stuff. The secret room like today right now has the new flooring in it. Uh, it still has of course the, uh, if you watched last week, it still has the holes with the da -da 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 across. So, after we do the secret room a little bit and show you what happened there, uh, I'm going to show you the, uh, a, a different method for finding metal in wood, which includes keeping metal out of your saw blades and stuff, and, and the, the little device I use. I'll even see if I can put a link below in the description for anybody that wants to go over to, I guess it would be eBay or Amazon, I'm not sure, I think it's eBay, and uh, pick one of these up. They're not expensive, but uh, in the long run, they are a great little way to find metal inside wood or if it's buried somewhere, and it'll help detect. I also use a, a regular stud finder, of course, but the other day the stud finder w uh, where I was working wouldn't find uh, even a drywall screw, and again, I brought this device out, and I found, the, uh, I found what I was looking for, so hey, that was good. Uh, the other thing going on this week, uh, we'll just sort of head over here a little bit is this box. This box is next week and this box is really cool but again like I had said last week if you're into 3D printing or thinking about it this is probably the baby you want. We're gonna open this up next week and really put it together take a look at it and I'll tell you the reasons why if you're a, a new to 3D or you want to get a bigger one or you're looking for a good deal on one this is probably what you're looking for so we'll get into that next week. This week, I just wanted to go backwards a little bit and just show you the uh, cabinet being ripped out and stuff for the secret room and how we found the secret room even because, it, like I said, it was, it's still strange and baffling that a room like that would be, you know, built and sealed off for about 30 years and I just, it's like, we were, we just, I'm glad there was no dead body in it, right? So anyways, let's, let's do some, run some clips from when I was tearing that thing out and we'll get, we'll come back. All right. Okay, so... So here's the uh, the hallway, but this was where things got kind of weird. Right here is the uh, doorway to the uh, guest room, and then all of a sudden you have this walk along the wall here, and technically there's that's a long wall. There's nothing there. So when we came around the corner here, there was this bookcase right here that was swam where this light's shining out right now, and from that. That's when we realized there's got to be something behind the bookcase because this just doesn't even measure up right. And we checked and checked and checked from closets, you name it, trying to figure it out. And was like, no, there's definitely something back there. So anyways, let's roll the clips and we'll sort of jump in and you can see what's going on. So down here uh, in the bottom, I cut kind of, a, I guess we'll call it kind of an exploratory hole. And you can see that I pushed my way through. There's carpeting back there. Uh, drywall is all finished and painted everything and this is a totally sealed off area that was he had no access to the house they even insulated the wall for sound barrier I guess with it uh, and put two by four structure with inside but the whole thing was built like that and you can see I'll show you a little bit of the indent there there's you can sort of see like the wall goes it goes it's, it's beyond this wall here I'm assuming a closet they took this electrical and we're gonna have to I have to fix all this took it up here and uh, brought it down and of course put a little service plug and a TV outlet. Uh, this is all got to, yeah, this is all got to go bye-byes because I'm going to make this into uh, probably some kind of a serviceable area for the house, but how strange is that? And you could sort of say, this right here, this is the wall that you would have seen that you thought this is where it stopped and that this was maybe the guest room on the other side, which as you can find, see here, Absolutely not. Uh, so uh, normally I don't shoot this kind of a show, but I thought I would share this one with you because I'm just kind of intrigued when I get the rest of this lumber out of here, out of the way, if there's anything else in the room. So when I cut the first hole and I went down inside, I did manage to find a nickel, an old, you know, buffalo type nickel down in there. The house is more than 30 years old, so the money sort of made sense that it would have been older money that had been falling in there. I wonder if the Hoover boys can ever tell that story. <laughs> uh, I'm also doing flooring and laminate. So we're ripping, my wife and I, she's ripping all the carpet, all the padding, everything out of here. We're uh, getting rid of almost, I guess eventually we'll get rid of like all the carpet and just go with hardwood floors, laminate, because uh, 
carpet and me just I don't know it's it's just it's not a lifetime material in my opinion and I really enjoy hardwood floors they're easy to clean a lot easier to look after so we uh, did some shopping found the hardwood floor we want started bringing some cases home and in the meantime she got kind of excited and decided to start ripping the carpet up because the carpet was damaged from the previous owners so badly that you couldn't get you know uh, short of trying to re-dye the color into the carpet it was just destroyed and it was a really expensive carpet by the looks of it. it's a shame so I'm standing on a concrete floor right now because we're bare concrete we're back to bare concrete in this room now and the hallway and I've been in contact with a fella his channel's name is uh, so that's how they do that and he does uh, laminate and vinyl flooring and stuff and I've been asking him a few questions to help you know give me a couple pointers along the way because uh, I have never really laid laminate flooring before I'm sure it's like everything else with coffee and tools we'll just we'll figure it out as we go along and we'll make a few mistakes along the way but this this is just intriguing yeah, a secret room that's been closed for over 30 years and I'm reopening it to, and uh, the long-range plan right now is I'm gonna put a bookcase here on a hand piano hinge and have a lock here and the bookcase will swing out and this will become like a, a secret room or a safe room or whatever inside the, the home itself and uh, you maybe store your secret documents or even use it as a vault or whatever later on so only you and me will know about this room when I get done right well that's dark wow well what I did here was uh, I put a light inside the closet a little bit here for just a second so I can show you guys this I got the shelving on the top off there was insulation underneath that and then there was a piece of plywood underneath that but it gets even weirder but let's see if I can get you down here a little bit and you can kind of see yeah there's another shelf below this shelf that was built into the back of this cabinet this is all painted white that's finished walls although there looks like something was uh, rifled into the uh, wall here at one time I don't know what that was a they had something going on this is a really strange room but it's a room that I guess you could say I'm getting it back because it was closed off with the cabinets that were here and you had no idea that space was even back there so it's getting stranger and stranger so uh, the other thing I'm going to do is cut this uh, electrical uh, just sort of cut it loose from the board or whatever and I'll just pull it up out of the way for the time being while I get the rest of this uh, cabinet and woodwork out of here. <sighs> when we come back. So I've got the white wall removed and apparently there was insulation in here too, which is in the middle of the house, but I'm assuming this was sound insulation and that was the reason for it. Getting, we're getting close now. I can almost feel it. <sighs> well guys, looks like we've got it. Uh, just sort of pan down a little bit and just sort of get that idea what the whole mess looks like and then that's the uh, original carpet that was probably 30 years ago that whether when the house was new or 30 plus years ago pretty fascinating stuff and uh, we're still looking for money I think we're gonna find some <laughs> when we come back Wow so there you have it <laughs> tore all the, the shelf that was here behind it the shelf was this deep about less than half of what this space is in here and we've managed to take all of it out of here the uh, wife and I've been busy <laughs> tore everything out of here and emptied it I'm still like I said it's, it's a, to me it's still a bit of a mystery what this room in the in the master bedroom would have been for because we have a huge walk-in closet so why would you do this or what was it for or the intention I even thought about maybe a desk with a computer or something but uh, or a bar that would be good yeah but we've cleaned it out and the next step after this is going to be I'm going to build a bookshelf system but it will be here and hinge so that the rest of the room will be accessible All right. All right, so thanks for watching that part. Uh, like I said, secret room, interesting, and we'll uh, develop more storyline once I start building the cabinet that will go in there to swing in and out of that door. And uh, we'll probably store some, you know, uh, can't say it without getting demonetized, so we're gonna store some bang bang back there. You know, bang bangs, uh, uh, never mind. <laughs> now, the secret weapon.
Here's a uh, piece of board left over from the uh, job I was doing with the laminate flooring. And we, we broke a few pieces of the uh, trim around the house uh, trying to get the flooring in and get this stuff off the wall. So I had to replace a few pieces, paint it up, whatever. But the thing is, is uh, when you get old boards, skids, whatever, a lot of times there might be a nail or a screw you don't see and you run into it with the saw. And that's the last thing you want to do. The last thing you want to do is find a screw <laughs> while using a good saw that might have an $80 blade in it. There's my weapon of choice right here. It also makes a great metal detector, which is what it's used for as a pinpointer. And I rest, one of the reasons I mentioned the Hoover Boys today because they use these metal detecting type uh, systems all the time on their show. Uh, this is an inexpensive one, but it still does the job. And you, you turn it on, and there's a little light there that comes on. You hear a little beep, and then you start looking around, and you know, just, you see, ha ha. There's metal in the board here. But you can just wave it across here real quick and you say the rest of the board is fine until you hit this end here where there's a screw still lodged in the board. And I also use this, uh, you know, if my Stanley uh, stud finder is not working or something, I'll take one of these. I'll put a link in the description below, which I will help the channel because I'll probably set it up with uh, eBay or something. And I'll give you a link so you can find these things. They're not expensive, but as a woodworker, uh, or especially like when you do destruction like I do, where you tear stuff out, and you want to reuse the old lumber, something like this is only about, I, I think there may be, I don't even think it was $20, but for the price of it, to be able to check your board and maybe save you from hitting that screw with the, uh, you know, a nice saw blade, Psh, are you kidding me? It's, it's well worth it, and there's a lot of other things you can do. And you can also go out in the front lawn and find nickels or, you know, whatever in the grass uh, if you're into that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. The giveaway. I promised a giveaway that would be very unusual. This is going to be an unusual giveaway. Now, I'm going to give you the address to this email box that we're going to be using. It's not the old one we had. This is a different one again. So, and it's going to be worded a little different, So, but it'll be easy enough for you to, you know, enter. This is a book that I wrote back in 2006. I will sign the dedication page and also sign to, for all the adventures to your name. And we'll send you this out, a copy of this book, first edition, original from the original publishing company. And uh, we're gonna give one of these out. Now, to get this book, all you have to do is go to coffee and tool rewards at gmx.com. That'll be the email box we'll use. And uh, just fill out, just in the subject line, just write book. And then on the email, I just need your name and an address, and that's it, within the lower 48 states. And we'll include Canada on this one, yeah. So we'll do the lower 48 or Canada. I might even do, you know, I'm not, eh, no, I'm not gonna do any of the others. No, that's it, that's too expensive <laughs> for shipping for free. But we'll, the winner will get this, but with your name, make sure you spell your name right, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. We'll put it on here in the dedication page. I will write it out to you personal and sign the book, and you'll get a free copy of this particular book, which is very hard to get. For about 150 bucks on the black market, I think you can still buy it. I wish I could get some of that commission. Hmm. But uh, we'll, we'll give that away this, this week at Coffee and Tools, because I want to do, I'd like to give more stuff away. And the email box kind of blew up, so it was like, okay, we need another email box. We might change again down the road with a website system where you fill something out, but just email to coffeeandtoolrewards at gmx.com, and I'll, I'll put, the, uh, put the description up above me, and that way you can see what the email address looks like. I'll also put it in the description below. I'll also put a link to the description below in case you're interested in one of these little uh, pinpointer metal detectors they're great if you're a metal detector but if you're a wood guy these things are this thing has already saved me a few headaches uh, and i've only had it for a short time but uh, i really like it i wish uh, i wish the company would have sent me a free sample or something <laughs> never mind <laughs> but the uh next week i'm gonna do a 3d printer that is like I say if you're thinking about buying one this should probably be the one you should buy this is the one i went shopping for and i didn't find it at the time but if i had if it was available back then, I wish I could have bought this one. This would have been, you know, the right one. Thank you so much for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, please share, please subscribe, and God bless everybody. Adios, guys. We're out of here.